Have you ever heard that slot machines are required by law to have an amount of money that they're set to pay back to the players, but also you don't know how long it's gonna take to balance out and for those odds to become true. It could take 30 years to balance out and that machine might have just been put on the floor yesterday. Therefore, you don't know what the true odds are at any given time. Have you ever heard that? Because that statement is completely wrong. I'm gonna explain why in this video, which is episode 14 of my series of everything about slot machines. I teach slot machines and gambling from the perspective of like math and statistics, and I'm hoping to clear up some of the BS that I see out there. If you like these slot machine videos, don't forget to hit the like button, and please consider subscribing. Earlier I said that my opening statement is completely wrong, but let's break down all the reasons why. First, slot machines do in fact have a percentage that they're designed to pay back. People usually say that they have to be above the minimum that's set by the state. But by and large, the state's minimum payback percentage is so ridiculously low that no casino would ever dare set a machine anywhere close to that. In Nevada, the minimum set by the state is 75%. And there might be some exceptions, but I think the absolute minimum that a designer even manufactures a machine is in the neighborhood of 85%. The minimum that casinos even set the absolute worst machines to is like 87% and most machines are set to above 90%. So the state's minimum of 75% isn't even remotely a factor. They can't set machines that low because they don't even make them. So really the casinos can set the machines to anything that they want. The next thing we need to understand is the machines aren't trying to hit any percentage. Let's say the machine's set to 90%. People have a general misunderstanding of what that even means. Episode nine of this series, I really broke it down so anybody could understand it. But the general concept is that if a spin costs a dollar, the machine's gonna have thousands of possibilities of what the RNG can land on. And of those thousands of possibilities, they average out to 90 cents. Some possibilities you can land on will pay way more than that and some pay nothing. But if you average out all the thousands or even millions of possibilities, they average out to 90 cents. So the spin costs a dollar and all the possibilities average out to 90%. That's where the payback percentage comes from. The machine doesn't need to manipulate itself to make that payback percentage happen. It'll just happen automatically. All the machine needs to do is randomly select outcomes and it'll average out to 90 cents. The actual pay of the slot machine will just naturally converge to that payback percentage due to the law of large numbers, which is the last video of this series. So let's say the odds of a hypothetical slot machine are 90%. The odds are 90% in the same way that flipping a coin, the odds of getting heads are 50%, or rolling a die and getting any given number are 16.66%. You wouldn't say the odds of flipping a coin and getting heads are 50%, but that's only over thousands of flips and you never know how long it'll take for the odds to become 50%. That statement just doesn't make any sense. The odds to get heads are 50% on this flip, the next flip, they'll be 50% tomorrow. The odds are always 50%. The results might change, but the odds never do. It's the same thing on the slot machine. The expected value of the spin are 90%. The odds will be 90% on this spin, the next spin, the one after that, it'll be 90% tomorrow. It's always gonna be 90%. From the moment the machine is put on the floor, the odds will always be 90%. The odds don't balance out to 90%. The odds just are 90%. So maybe I'm just speaking technicalities, but it's the results that change, not the odds. So then that brings us back to the question, how many spins does the state require before the results of the machine has to hit 90%? There's two things why that statement is false or kind of doesn't make sense. First, you'd need some kind of tolerance for that. If over the life of the machine, the machine's paid back 91%, but it's only been a month, is that close enough? What if over the life of the machine, it's 89.5%, but it's been like five years? What if it's 90.0001%, and it's been 20 years, is that close enough? It's most likely never gonna be exactly 90% down to the penny. So what does the state say is a close enough of a tolerance over time? The state doesn't, there is no requirement. That's a complete myth. The state just requires that the machine is operating correctly and that the results are reasonable for the volatility of the machine. So the machine doesn't need to balance itself out because there is absolutely no requirement for that. The state requires that the machine is operating correctly and that the true odds and that the theoretical odds are the same thing. The actual results don't matter. I know a lot of people aren't gonna believe me on that, 
and I'd be happy to post a follow-up video and correct myself. Just go ahead and post the regulation from the state that says what the tolerance is that they require for how far away a machine can be from its theoretical odds over a given time period. You won't find that regulation because it doesn't exist. And that's because some machines are gonna take way longer to get close to their theoretical odds than other machines. You're gonna have to watch the next video in the series to fully understand that. Let me know in the comments if this is all making sense and if you've ever believed the myth of balancing. Don't forget to hit the like button. Please consider subscribing. For your next Vegas trip, get educated. Thanks for watching.